Meeting of the Brockton City Council for April 10th, 2023 will come to order. I recognize a quorum. Please join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Obviously, I am not Council President Susan De Castro. I am temporarily filling in. Uh, the Council President had surgery last Thursday, is doing very well, and we send her very best wishes for a speedy recovery and get her back into action here. Uh, Mr. Clerk, item number one. Acceptance of the minutes of the March 27th, 2023 City Council meeting. Accepted and filed. Item number two, we have the appointment of special... Council Lally. Mr. President. I'd like to make a motion to take items number two through ten collectively and then act uh, on them under suspension of the rules. Second. All right, there is a motion made to take these collectively and act on them under suspension of the rules. It is properly seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? It is a vote. Mr. Clerk. We have the appointment of the following as special police officers for the City of Brockton Police Department. Charles J. Cassiani of Whitman, Mass., uh, Andrew Cesarini of Brockton, Mass., Michael Damiano of Milford, Mass., Alfred Gazzaro of East Bridgewater, Mass., William Healy of Middleborough, Mass., Daniel Leonard of uh, West Bridgewater, Mass., Peter Skelly of Wareham, Mass., Robert Smith of West Bridgewater, and Scott D. Ullman of Brockton, Mass., all to be appointed as special police officers to the City of Brockton Police Department. question now is on confirming the appointments by a roll call vote. Taken collectively. Will the clerk please call the roll? Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Eight in the affirmative. The appointments are confirmed. Council Lally. Motion to reconsider in the hopes it does not prevail. Second. Motion to reconsider. If you're in favor, raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. Reconsideration fails. Item number 11. Item 11, we have the appointment of Frederick McDermott of Ash Street, Brockton, Mass., to the Elections Commission as a commissioner for a four-year term, ending March 2027. Uh, Referred to finance. We have the reappointment of Tony Goncalves of Brockton, Mass., to the City of Brockton Planning Board as a member for a five-year term, ending March 2028. Referred to finance. We have the reappointment of Cindy Ethia Koska of Brockton, Mass., to the City of Brockton Cemetery Board of Trustees as a member for a five-year term ending March 2028. Referred to finance. We have the reappointment of Matthew C. Delisme of Brockton, Mass., to the City of Brockton Library Board of Trustees as a member for a three-year term ending March 2026. Referred to finance. We have the appointment of Sharifa K. Mapp of Brockton, Mass., to the City of Brockton Conservation Commission as a commissioner for a three-year term ending March 2026. Referred to finance. We have the appointment of Fabian Myra Zephyr of Brockton, Mass., to the Council on Aging as a member for a three-year term ending March 2026. Referred to finance. We have the appointment of the following candidate to the uh, City of Brockton Beautification Committee as member for a one-year term ending March 2024, Kelly M. Hanlon of Westfield Drive, Brockton, Mass. Referred to finance. We have the appointment of uh, Linda Piantronio of Brockton, Mass. to the City of Brockton Beautification Committee as a member for a one-year term. Referred to finance. We have the appointment of Sharifa K. Mapp of Brockton, Mass. as a can candidate to the City of Brockton Beautification Committee for a one-year term. Referred to finance. We have the appointment of Shelley Jackson of Brockton, Mass., as a candidate to the City of Brockton Beautification Committee as a member for a one-year term. Referred to finance. We have the hearing of petition of Joao Pereira, J.P. Auto Repair, 300 Pleasant Street, Apartment 2, Brockton, for a motor vehicle repair mechanical license and a motor vehicle repair body license, located at 77 North Main Street, Brockton, Mass., in City Clerk's Office, August 5th, 2022. Hearing assigned for April 10th, 2023. Fire Department has no objections on the motor vehicle repair mechanical license. The Fire Department does have objections currently on the motor vehicle repair body license. 
as it does, currently does not conform to standards outlined by Mass General Law, CMR, and ROCOB. Currently, there is no proper equipment to allow for painting, priming, or bondoing, and the approval of the equipment and installation by the fire department. The fire department would then have no objection. All of the paperwork is on file. At the time having arrived, I declare this hearing open. Is there anyone here in favor? If so, would you just give your name and address to the clerk, please? Joe Pereira. All right. And welcome. Don't be worried. Just make a statement and let us know what you intend to do. I do a mechanic repair, a body work repair. Mr. Chair. Uh, Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Pereira. Uh, colleagues, I had the opportunity uh, to meet with uh, Mr. Pereira and his wife uh, Esmeralda uh, at the um, at their uh, location of business. Um, it took a walk through. It was clean. It was orderly. Uh, they their their trash is well kept. Their parking was uh, well defined. Um, <clears throat> so. They're, they're seeking their, uh, both their uh, motor vehicle repair and uh, auto body license uh, this evening. Um, on the issue, the, the clerk mentioned that the uh, poli uh, fire department um, did not approve any um, auto body license due to a lack of uh, painting apparatus. Are, are you doing any auto body painting on your premises? So, Mr. Clerk, if there's no painting involved, uh, does, does it require that specific um, requirement of a auto, uh, of the paint? Well, what I would recommend, because this is a license for both, there are some that have just motor vehicle repair. If you're going to approve it, what I would recommend is a motion to approve it with the stipulation that the body repair license is not, not available to use until approval by the fire department. So they, they would be able to use the motor vehicle repair side of things but they would not be able to do body work until Deputy Chief Williams and his department have signed off on it. Understood. Um, uh, while visiting, uh, colleagues, while visiting uh, Mr. Uh, Pereira's shop, uh, we did talk about uh, the ordinances uh, and uh, talked about the requirements under the ordinances for the motor vehicle repair license and the uh, auto body uh, repair. So uh, they're well informed of what the ordinances require and uh, they agree to uh, follow those uh, ordinances. Additionally, we talked about uh, hours of operation and from my understanding, uh, this will be a 7.30 to 6.30 operation uh, Monday through Friday and on Saturdays uh, 7.30 to 3 o'clock with uh, no operation on Sundays. Is that is that correct? Yes. Or holidays. So um, after uh, meeting with uh, Mr. Pereira uh, and his wife, I, I encourage uh, my colleagues to vote in favor of this license. Thank you. All right, Council, the Chair would inquire, are you adding in the request of the clerk that we make this contingent upon fire department approval and the hours of operation, are they to be included in the license? No, I, I um, made those comments uh, uh, for the information of my colleagues. I, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to lock them into anything uh, that, you know, they may have to adjust over a period of time and then have to come in here and change their license to do so. So I want to allow them some flexibility uh, on their hours of operation. But um, they did state that those were their intended hours, and I wanted to make that known to any abutters or uh, or the public and my colleagues on that matter uh, as it comes. Uh, as it, it as to the auto body license, I'll uh, I, I make a motion to amend to uh, uh, to add the stipulations uh, provided by the clerk. We'll do that after the hearing is clo hearing yeah, closed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, yes. Is there anyone else here in favor? Anyone else here in favor? If not, I'll declare that part of the hearing closed. Anyone here in opposition? Is there anyone here in opposition to? the request from the applicants. Anyone here in opposition? If not, I declare that part of the hearing closed. We now have a motion on an amendment. Uh, was that seconded? Yeah, it was seconded. Uh, we're now voting on just the amendment. So all in favor of the amendment? All opposed? It is a vote. We're now voting on the license as presented and as outlined by uh, Councillor Thompson. Any other debate, questions? Councillor Lally. Just a point of inquiry. Uh, besides what we already voted on, are, what are the other stipulations? There are no other stipulations. 
Nothing for operating hours, anything like that? Nothing outside of what the, the law, uh, Councilor didn't make a motion for that. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, Council Thompson. I was just saying that the, uh, you know, the usual stipulations that we hear are all spelled out within the ordinance itself. I don't think there's any need to add uh, stipulations which were already pretty clear in the ordinance. And uh, we did speak about those stipulations and um, they understand them and uh, they're willing to abide by them. So I'm, I'm fine with it as is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Anything further? All right. I believe we can do this by hand vote. All in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Item 22, we have a report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of April 3rd, 2023. Accepted and placed on file. We have communication from the mayor appointing the following as special police officers to the City of Brockton Police Department. Charles Cassiani, Andrew Cesarini, Michael Damiano, Alfred Gazzaro, William Healy, Daniel Leonard, Peter Skelly, Robert Smith, and Scott Allman. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor appointing Frederick McDermott of Ash Street, Brockton, Mass. to the Elections Commission as a commissioner for a four-year term ending March 2027. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor reappointing Tony Goncalves of Fairview Ave, Brockton, Mass. to the City of Brockton Planning Board as a member for a five-year term ending March 2028. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor reappointing Cindy Ethia Koska of 50 Center Street, Brockton, to the City of Brockton Cemetery Board of Trustees as a member for a five-year term ending March 2028. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the mayor reappointing Matthew Delisme of Clifford Ave, Brockton, Mass., to the City of Brockton Library Board of Trustees as a member for a three-year term ending March 2026. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor appointing Sharifa K. Mapp of Hillburg Ave, Brockton, Mass., to the City of Brockton Conservation Commission as a commissioner for a three-year term ending March 2026. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Mayor appointing Fabienne Myra Zephyr of Campbell Street, Brockton, Mass., to the Council on Aging as a member for a three-year term, ending March 2026. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Mayor appointing the following candidates to the City of Brockton Beautification Committee as members for a one-year term, ending March 2024. Kelly M. Hanlon, Linda Piantronio, Sharifa K. Mapp, and Shelley E. Jackson, all of Brockton, Mass. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the Fire Chief uh, informing you of the promotion of electrician James F. Dunneman to working foreman, signal maintainer in the Brockton Fire Department. This promotion is per MOA with Local 144 and the City of Brockton. Mr. Dunneman is the number one candidate for this position. And I believe he's here tonight. He is. Councilors, as I understand it, there is no action required on this. We're being notified of a promotion of the top candidate on the list. He is here, and I'd like to ask him to stand and be recognized. <laughs> Give a communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. We, communication from the mayor in accordance with the general laws of Massachusetts, Chapter 44, recommending that the City Council authorize the total appropriation of $5,550,000 using the attached form of order with language as recommended by Attorney Richard A. Manley, Jr. of Lock Lord LLP, the City's Bond Council, in order to provide funding through borrowing said amount for the purpose of acquiring a parcel or parcels of land located at 1782 Main Street in Brockton. Accepted and placed on file. We have a communication from the CFO recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Unfinished business. We have an ordinance amending Article 2, Section 28, Compensation, to provide the City Council President an additional $2,500 per annum in compensation, commencing January 1st, 2024. In City Council, February 13th, 2023, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable. In City Council, March 27, 2023, passed to a third reading by a hand vote. Councilors, this will be on ordination, but I'm going to take a brief recess for a minute to allow our guests to leave. Be in a brief recess.
time. Council will be back from recess. We are now on number, item number 35, roll call vote on ordination. Uh, Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, Mr. President, uh, when this item came before us on the uh, Ordinance Committee, I was one of two members that voted against it uh, because I honestly feel that no one's putting a gun to anybody's head to become uh, president of the City Council. I think we do it because we have the time to do it or the love to do it. Uh, we just passed a raise for future councillors this year to go to $30,000, I believe. And I think although this is somewhat symbolic in the sense, I think it kind of uh, almost muddies the, the whole process out. So I'm actually going to vote for against it. So I don't know exactly how my colleagues are going to do, but I think it's, uh, it's something that for the, that kind of money, I don't think we need the, uh, the scrutiny that comes along with it. So thank you very much for that. Anyone else? If not, the question is now on ordination by a roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Diagostino? No. Farwell? Yes. Lally? No. Mendez? Minicello? No. Rodriguez? No. Tavares? No. Texera? No. Thompson? No. That's seven in opposition, two in favor. Ordination is not, it is not ordained. Item number 36. 36, Ordinance, Chapter 2, Article 3, Division 8, Superintendent of Public Buildings of the Ordinances of the City of Brockton is hereby amended, establishing an inspectional services department within the building department. In City Council, February 13th, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. In City Council, March 27th, 2023, Passed to a third reading by a hand vote as amended. Question now is on ordination by roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. <coughs> I'll come back. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The matter is ordained. Item number 37. Ordinance, an ordinance amending Article 3, Section 2-127 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton as follows. Article 3, Section 127 of the Ordinances of the City of Brockton is hereby amended by inserting the following. Category PR2, position Deputy Commissioner of Buildings, minimum salary 106917 with three steps to follow. PR3, Chief of Inspections, Minimum salary $83,130 with three steps to follow. In City Council, August 22, 2022, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Ordinance. That report was favorable as amended. In City Council, March 27, 2023, passed to a third reading by a hand vote as amended. Question now is on, is on ordination as amended by a roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. Matter is ordained. Item number 38. 38. Ordered that the City Council authorizes the acceptance and expenditure of the grant congressionally directed spending in the amount of $3 million from U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, Fiscal Year 23 Community Project Funding Grant. Two, the Finance Department Fiscal Year 23 Community Project Funding Grant Fund. The grant, congressionally directed spending, funds will be used to upgrade the Lawrence R. Cosgrove Memorial Pool. In City Council, March 13, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Postponed in City Council meeting, March 27, 2023. Question now is on adoption by roll call vote. Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, you're, as you're aware, the last time that this item came before the council here, there was a, a, a lot of discussion that took place uh, with regards to the funding to the east side pool. Uh, we had actually a very good meeting with the administration and the folks in the, uh, in the uh, parks department in the sense, and I'm uh, somewhat confident that uh, we will be able to move forward with this, uh, with this process. So. 
uh, we're going to be included in the final renditions that actually will take place. As a matter of fact, uh, we are going to have some sort of walkthrough in the spaces with the designers <coughs> to come up with the, what we envision for this particular facility that we all call home to the east side of the city. So with that in mind, I think it makes sense for us to move, move this process forward and accept the funding for this particular project and then know that at least we will be involved in the, uh, at least in having some say on the design moving forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else? Councilor Minichello. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this afternoon, I also had a nice conversation with um, Tim Carpenter and uh, expressed to him um, you know, a lot of basically the vision that many of us, you know, basically all of us really want to see um, as, a, as a final result and, and incorporate it into the bid so that, so that the people that are going to place a bid on this are going to see the expectations of what, um, of what the city wants, you know, um, because this is a nice opportunity to really develop that property into something um, you know, better than it has been um, bigger than it has been, because like we said before, the city used to have four pools, you know, each, one on each side of the city. And, you know, the weather from what we all hear about, you know, the weather and global warming, things are going to get warmer. And a lot more children who don't have access to pools and, and cool water in, in the summer are going to utilize or want to <coughs> utilize that space. Um, we've, we've seen, uh, you know, Councillor Rodriguez was instrumental with regard to um, the Manning pool years ago. Uh, he, he, we all know, you know, what happens when the kids, when that's an overcrowded situation. You know, the, the kids are uh, ir irrit irritable that uh, can't get into the pool. So, so there needs to be sort of a bigger space, a sort of a nice adjacent area, whether it's a part of that property or just adjacent to it, connected from the school. We own the land, so we have the ability to do something nice to expand the footprint, so to speak. You know, in compliance with the law with regard to, you know, the necessities of, of fencing when there's a pool, you know, when there's water in, in, in a pool, you have to have certain, you know, things in place. But I, I mentioned to Mr. Carpenter, you know, the fencing can be beautified. You know, we can have, we can have banners up, you know, like, like we have many of the nice buildings here in Brockton with all the, the painting and the, um, you know, the, the artwork that's done. We can, we can have, you know, on the fencing, you know, beautiful artwork, you know, by, by some of the kids here in the school system that are so talented. So, so we're going to work together, and um, I think we're going to end, end up having a really nice finished product that all of us, you know, here on the city council, you know, really want out of this property uh, for, our, for our children in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Anyone else? All right, if not, the matter is uh, adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azek? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 39. 39 ordered that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Bud Avenue extending from Sheridan Street easterly, 1,166.67 feet, more or less, to Adams Street. And for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street or way of said city of Brockton, said easement, passing by or over lands of those persons shown on Exhibit A, attached here to and parties unknown. Said layout of said street being 50 feet in width is shown more particularly on the following described plan. Number one, land court plan, 27625A, sheets one and two, entitled Plan of Land in Brockton, Bradford Savitz, CE, dated November 1st, 1955, April 5th, 1957, and June 13th, 1957. The land taken is more fully described as follows. All the land within the limits of a private way known as Bud, Ave, Bud Avenue, supposedly supposed to belong to parties unknown, being a strip of land 50 feet in width, extending from Sheridan Street easterly, a distance of about 1166.67 feet, more or less, to Adams Street, as shown on the herein described plan, and to which reference is hereby made for a more particular description. And we have considered and estimated the damages sustained by all purpose, Persons who have not waived damages in their several estates as follows. No awards. Exhibit A, layout and acceptance and all other attachments are all located in the clerk's office for viewing. 
in City Council December 12, 2022, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Planning and Finance. Those report, reports were favorable. All right, the matter is adoption by a roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. 10 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Number 40. 40. Ordered that the following petition be approved and submitted to the Great and General Court for approval under Clause 1 of Section 8 of Article 2, as amended of the amendments to the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and to that and to the end that legislation be adopted precisely as follows, except for clerical or editorial changes of form only. An act relative to the appointment of a Commissioner of Health and Human Services in the City of Brockton. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives and General Court assembled, and by the authority of the same as follows. Section 1, notwithstanding any provision of Section 26B of Chapter 111 of the General Laws to the contrary, the City of Brockton may appoint a Commissioner of Public Health who has control over the Health and Human Services Department and who shall either, one, be the holder of a graduate degree in medicine, public health, public administration, or a related field, with at least two years full-time administrative experience in the organization, management, or delivery of public health or health care services, or two, have an equivalent combination of education and experience in health or health care. In City Council, March 27, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance, that report was favorable. Question now is an adoption by roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 41. Item 41, order that the following name, sum B, and the same is hereby transferred as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Transfer of $36,126.11 from Human Resources, Employee Benefits, Contractual Union Costs to Public Property, Personal Services, other than overtime for the purposes of funding the Brockton Building and Construction Trades contract. This provides funding for the first year of a three-year contract July 1st, 2022 through June 30, 2025. In City Council, March 27th, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is now on adoption by a roll call vote. Would the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. 10 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Order uh, number 42, please. Item 42, ordered that the following name, sum B, and the same is hereby transferred, as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Transfer of $50,000 from Human Resources, Employee Benefits, Contractual Union Costs, to DPW Water Enterprise, DPW Sewer Enterprise, Library, Cemetery, DPW Highway, DPW Maintenance, DPW Refuse Enterprise, Parking Authority, Parks and Recreation, and Public Property, all for $5,000 transfers for the purposes of funding the Public Employees Local Union 1162 Water and Sewer Contract, Laborers <coughs> Local Union 1162 Contract, and Library SEIU Local 888 Unions Contract without detri detrimental impact on the continuous provision of the existing level of municipal services. This provides funding for the first year of a three-year contract, July 1st, 2022 through June 30, 2025. In City Council, March 27, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Diagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. 10 in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item number 43. 43. Ordered that in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53A, the city hereby accepts as a gift from the estate of Francis X. McDonald by and through its attorney, John F. Creedon Esquire, and submitted to the City Council by Mayor Robert F. Sullivan, subject under the said statute for approval by the City Council of Brockton as follows. The sum of $350,000 
to be used by the City of Brockton Parks and Recreation Commission under the direction of the Mayor and for A, improvements to the DW Field Park, inclusive of the golf course, and B, to acquire and place a park bench bearing a plaque with the name and in memory of the said Francis X. McDonald, go McDonald golf professional. In City Council, March 27, 2023, read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Will the clerk please call the roll? Azak? Yes. Giagostino? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Mendez? Yes. Minicello? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Tavares? Yes. Texera? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ten in the affirmative. The order is adopted. Item 44, resolve, be it resolved that members of the Brockton School Committee, Superintendent of Schools Michael Thomas, Mayor of Brockton Robert Sullivan, Chief Financial Officer Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer for the School Department Aldo Petronio, or their designees be invited to come before the Finance Committee to update the committee on the previous discussion of athletic facilities in the community, funding, and the need for development of fields and upgrades for recreational uses in the city. In City Council, February 27, 2023, Read and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. The matter is adoption by a hand vote. All those in favor, all those opposed, it is a vote. Item 45. Ordinances, number 45, ordinance. An ordinance amending Article 4, Division 4, City Clerk, and Article 4, Division 2, City Auditor. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Brockton. Article 4, Division 2, Section 2-268, shall be amended to strike the words and the Standing Committee on Finance so that the City Auditor shall only be the Clerk of the Standing Committee on Accounts. Be it further ordained to insert a new subsection to Article 4, Division 4 as follows. The City Clerk shall, in addition to his other duties, act as Clerk of the Standing Committee on Finance. Uh, referred to Councillor Azak and the Ordinance Committee. Item 46, Ordinance, an ordinance amending Part 2 of the revised ordinances of the City of Brockton. Article 3, Division 8, Superintendent of Public Buildings, is hereby amended by changing the titles of Superintendent of Public Buildings to be titled the Commissioner of Buildings. Be it further ordained that use of Superintendent of Public Buildings in Division 2, Section 2-127, pay plan shall now be titled the Commissioner of Buildings. I refer it to Councillor Azak and the Ordinance Committee. Item 47, ordered that the sum of $5,550,000 is appropriated to pay costs of acquiring a parcel or parcels of land located at 1782 Main Street in Brockton by eminent domain or otherwise, including the payment of all costs incidental and related thereto, including reno renovations and all furnishings and equipment necessary, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 7-1, or pursuant to any other enabling authority, and to issue bonds on notes of the city, therefore. Further ordered that the city treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under Mass General Laws, Chapter 44A, any and all bonds on notes of the city authorized by this vote, and to provide such information and execute such documents, as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. Councilor, this is referred to finance when we have a companion matter that will be a late file momentarily. Is there a, uh, a Councilor Texera? Council President, I want to make a motion to accept the late file. Second. Second. A motion to accept the late file. All in favor? All opposed? Late file accepted. Mr. Clerk. Ordered that the City of Brockton does hereby take in fee in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 79 and or other applicable law the following described parcel of land to wit, 1782 Main Street, parcel ID 119-02. For further reference, see Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 19133, page 29. We have considered and estimated the damages sustained by all persons who have not waived damages in their several estates and hereby determine and award the same as follows to be paid from the bond amounts previously authorized by the City Council for purchase or taking of property for public safety and general municipal purposes. Property owner, 1782 Main Street. Owner, M Trust, um, amount $5,550,000. Said taking shall include all trees, soil, or fixtures thereon. Refer to finance. I also have a communication uh, from the mayor re recommending the same. 
Accepted and placed on file. And a communication from the CFO relative to the same. Accepted and placed on file. Councillor Razak. I'd like to make a motion to accept a late file related Se to elections. Second. Second. It is motion made and properly seconded to admit late files for regarding elections. All those in favor? All those opposed? It is a vote. Mr. Clerk. Ordered in compliance with the provisions of the election laws. Notice is hereby given that the city preliminary will be held on Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, and that the city election will be held on Tuesday, November 7th, 2023, in the following designated polling places. All polling places are the same. However, Ward 2, Precinct C, will be moved to the Brockton Public Library, Main, main Branch, 304 Main Street, due to the construction of the remodeling of the uh, Mary Cruz Kennedy Center. The okay. polls will open at 7 a.m. and will be closed at 8 p.m. Said voters will then in their respective polling places give in their votes, each on one piece of paper, to the warden for the election of candidates for the following named office, vis-a-vis -vis mayor, councillor at large, ward councillors, and school committee. Refer to finance. One more. There's one more. Council Tavares, did you want to? Yes. Oh, sir. Okay. I have a mo uh, motion to accept the late file. Second. Okay. Motion made and properly seconded to admit a late file. All in favor? All opposed? It is a vote. Mr. Clerk. Ordered. Section 25B, early voting. Application for early voting ballots, early voting periods, sites and lists, counting of early, early voting ballots. Section C-1, the Select Board, Board of Selectmen, Town Council, or City Council of each city and town may vote to authorize early in-person voting for any other city or town preliminary or election not included in subsection B. Such vote may only be taken after a request from not less than 50 percent of the registrars of the city or town recommending in-person early voting, provided, however, that such vote shall not occur shall occur in not less than five business days prior to the proposed beginning of early voting. As part of the vote to allow early in-person voting under this subsection, a city or town shall set the early voting period to begin not sooner than 17 days before the preliminary or election and end not later than two days preceding the preliminary or election. Number three, early voting under this subsection shall be conducted during the usual business hours of each city or town clerk unless different hours are set as part of the vote to allow early in-person voting, including any weekend hours. The election commission has voted unanimously to have in-person early voting. The commission has respectfully requested the council put it to a vote. According to Mass General Laws, the council now has to vote on that. I refer to the Finance Committee. And that's all I have. Uh, Councillor Recognitions. Councillor Rodriguez. A moment of recognition, sir. Uh, Mr. President, as you know, um, last Monday the President of Cape Verde um, at an invitation of several universities in Massachusetts um, took time to visit our great city. And he sends his sincere thank you to this city's government and its people. But I also wanted to take just a second or so to, to give kudos to the children of Brockton High School and the school system. Uh, from the kids that actually work at the, uh, at the cafe, to the JROTC kids, as well as the concert choir. Uh, the administration and staff of Brockton Public Schools, they, uh, they did such a wonderful job that actually uh, gave us all a sense of pride and, and confidence that we are doing a good job uh, directing the children of this city and the school system as well. So I felt that it was important for us to publicly state that. And again, a, a sincere word of thanks to all those that made it possible and made our city look real good. Thank you, sir. Before I go to the next counselor, I'd like to, uh, and, it, and it's a real honor to, uh, to stand and congratulate Counselor at Large David Texera on the birth of his son within the last few days. Uh, let's see if the sleepless nights affect his work here. I hope not, <laughs> but you've been blessed with a gift from God and we all recognize that and we wish you nothing but good health and happiness as uh, your son develops and grows, so. Hear, hear. Anyone else? Uh, Councillor D'Agostino. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, the City of Brockton is seeking input from Campello residents to help guide the future of the Campello neighborhood. 
um, we'll be holding the first of a series of public workshops um, Wednesday, April 26th at 6 p.m. in the cafeteria at South Middle School. These workshops are part of a larger effort to improve the Campello neighborhood and provide import an important opportunity for residents to have their voices heard and provide valuable input on the future of this project and their neighborhood. Uh, we encourage all Campello residents to participate in these workshops, um, share your thoughts, your ideas. Uh, we will have interpreters available um, uh, for uh, Cape Verdean, Haitian Creole, and Spanish. Uh, there'll be light refreshments. Uh, if you have uh, any, uh, if you'd like any more information on it, you can obviously contact myself, Councilor Nicastro, um, or the Brockton Planning Department. Planning Department can be reached at 580-7113 or planning at cobma.us. Thank you. Anyone else? Very quickly, congratulations to Councilor Azak, Councilor Lally, and the Mayor for the stop and shop uh, issue. Very well done, and Councillor uh, and Representative Mendes, anyone who participated in that, um, that, that's seeing government work. That's what we like. So if there being no further business, we are adjourned.